Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, the pricing for Intel's non-K models leak, Zen 4 at CES, first look at NVIDIA's new flagship GPU, and Intel's ARC GPUs get their first gaming benchmark. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we finally know the pricing for Intel's upcoming non-K models. In a new post by resident leaker Momomo underscore US, you can see that he shared a huge listing from Best Buy, and it lists the pricing for pretty much every non-K SKU from Intel's 12th gen CPU lineup. Though some names are placeholders, but it's pretty obvious what they are. Either way, let's go over it. Starting things off, we have the two new Pentium processors at $59.99 and $79.99. Next is the i3-12100F and non-F, which should be 4 P-Core 8-thread parts. And the F model without the iGPU comes in at $109.99, with the non-F at $139.99. Next would be the i5 models, which should all be 6 P-Cores and 12 threads. First is the 12400F at $179.99, which if you ask me is a great price, especially if the benchmarks we recently saw of the 12400 end up being true. Remember that it's a $180 part on par with AMD's 5600X, and this one would actually come with a cooler. Next is the non-F model at $209.99. Then we have the 12500 at $219.99 and the 12600 at $239.99. Next is the i7 models, which are 12-core 20-thread parts, with the F model at $329.99 and the non-F at $359.99. And finally are the i9 models, with the F at $509.99 and the non-F at $529.99. At the end of the day, Intel's 65-watt parts are looking more and more impressive, and should force AMD to lower their prices for next-gen. This is, of course, why competition is always needed, to which there's definitely more competition coming. But before I get to that, I've got oh the perfect God. last minute gift for any and all tech lovers out there, and it lasts a lifetime. I'm of course talking about this video sponsor, Brilliant the best way to learn computer science. And whether you give it as a gift or keep it for yourself, Brilliant is offering the first 200 of my viewers 20% off the annual premium. So why Brilliant? Well, for one, they were built to teach the STEM field, and they actually have you learn with fun, interactive lessons that show you how the concepts work. And second, they've got a ton of courses for beginners and experts alike and they've been updating their courses to make them even better and more interactive. Plus, you can learn on either their website or app, which I have to say, that app is pretty amazing. So don't wait and give the gift of learning with 20% off when you visit the link in the description below. And next up, we have a quick story that's got me really excited for AMD's upcoming CES. During a recent interview with Forbes, AMD CTO Mark Papermaster confirmed that the company plans to discuss their Zen 4-based architecture at CES. Specifically, he stated, quote, Later in the year, as it progresses, we'll share more details on Zen 4, with some mentioned at CES and more announcements on it over the course of 2022. For those who don't know, AMD's Zen 4 base parts are set to be their first real jump since Ryzen 5000 and is built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process. Of course, the main topic will be their 3D vCache Ryzen parts, but as he mentioned, Zen 4, which will likely be Ryzen 7000, will be discussed as well. And it's interesting that he mentioned more announcements later in 2022 because that seems to confirm the rumors that Zen 4 will be coming later next year. So Ryzen 3D really is nothing but a stopgap to Zen 4. And of course, if you want to keep up with all that news during CES, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Next up for today, we've been hearing about NVIDIA's new flagship GPU set to dethrone the RTX 3090 for a little while now. Between having a massive 450 watt TDP to getting more cores, the 3090 Ti is set to be NVIDIA's new champ. Well, we finally get our first look at the upcoming card, as IT Home recently shared an image of the ASUS TUF Gaming RTX 3090 Ti. And right off the bat, we can see that the fans have a lot more blades when compared to the regular TUF 3090. And obviously that lends credence to the 450 watt rumor we saw a little while back. 
One thing that seems to go against the rumors is that it mentions PCI Express 4.0, yet the 3090 Ti was supposed to come with the PCI Express 5.0 connector. With that said, it could just be the Founders Edition card that has that. Remember that Nvidia's Founders Edition came with the new connector, while board partners stuck to 8-pin power connectors. That, or the 5.0 connector alone, may not be enough to give it full support for PCI Express 5.0. At the end of the day, this essentially confirms that NVIDIA is set to release a new flagship GPU. Of course, it'll likely sell out in seconds, but there it is. And lastly for today, we finally have one of the first gaming benchmarks of Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs. In a new post from resident leaker Tom Apisat, you can see that we have the first benchmark from Ashes of the Singularity. I swear this game is always the first to get leaked benchmarks, yet pretty much no one plays it. Of course, it was essentially built to showcase DirectX 12, but anyway. You can see that the GPU is listed as XE Graphics, and given the score, plus the fact that it uses a 12900K, this is clearly a desktop part. And we're probably looking at the flagship model, though it could of course be an early build so things can only get better. When it comes to the score itself, this was tested at medium 1080p settings, and it got a score of 12500 and an average FPS of 126.9. Now unfortunately, Ashes of the Singularity isn't the most consistent benchmark, so when we compare it, you can see it gets around a 6700 XT and a 3080 Ti. With that said, there are a ton of 6700 XTs here, so it's likely right around that performance. And that's right at the performance most of the leaks have suggested, somewhere around a 3070 and 3070 Ti. Basically, this helps solidify those rumors, and like I've said in the past, I think that's a good place for Intel to start. Remember that this is their first real go at it. Sure, they had DG1, but that was really just meant for notebooks. DG2 is their first high-performance gaming cards. The real question will of course be pricing and availability. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs, or are you looking forward to NVIDIA's 3090 Ti? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!